I'd like to welcome everybody and go ahead and call this uh, special meeting of the Board of Trustees of Blaine County School District number 61 to order on this, the Tuesday, the 27th. Um, I'd like to welcome everybody here, both those in the audience and our applicants, candidates for the uh, vacancy on the trustee position, Board of Trustees. Lori, are there any additions, corrections, modifications, or substitutions to the current agenda? All right. With that, we'll go ahead and move on to the opening remarks. Um, like I said, we'll go ahead and introduce the uh, trustees a little bit and let you know how we're going to be doing it. Um, Lori's going to go ahead and ask all the questions. And question one, we'll go ahead and start with uh, the order that we received, the letters of interest. Um, so David Ray will be first, and then we'll have each one of the candidates answer each question. Question number two, we'll have Carol if you'll start the second question and, and, and so forth, and we'll just rotate through the questions that way. I believe there are... Thank you. There are eight questions there that, that uh, the board has chosen. Um, we have uh, an opportunity for follow-up questions from the board and general questions um, from the applicants for us as board members as well. After we get through the, the interview process, the board will go ahead and we have a sheet um, on it that we're going to be filling out to go ahead and, and make our, our selections. Um, on it, we have a location for our top two choices. And as board members, we'll just fill in those top two. And then we'll have uh, our board clerk, Corey Kaufman, go ahead and, and tally those. Each board member will fill those out individually. She'll tally those and then bring that back to me. And if we have a tie after, or after that um, time frame, we have a, a plan B for uh, another process that, to rank the candidates. So with that, um, I'd like to introduce, we have David Ray, Carol Freund, Richard Rick Roberts. Rick or Richard? Which uh, would you Rick prefer? is uh, less Rick. formal. OK. And, and Tom Bergen. I hope I pronounced your, your names correctly. And Bergen. yes, Bergen. yeah, my the, Bergen. Yes. Thank you. Um, with that, we'll go ahead and, and turn the time over to David Ray for your uh, introductions. Well, like he says, I'm David Ray, and I've been in the Valley about 15 years. And I thought it was appropriate that I start getting involved with the community more. I have kind of a unique background. I worked for IBM for 30 years, and my last seven or eight years. I sold exclusively to, to schools, K-12, and once in a while to higher ed, but mostly K-12 through Idaho and Montana. I sold both academic and I sold uh, administrative systems. In fact, Mike had one of our systems. So it gave me a unique perspective on how schools work kind of from the other side of the equation, if you will. So I know quite a bit about the functions of schools, the problems, the issues, that you deal with on a daily basis. So it gives me kind of a unique perspective, if you will. And uh, I have some ideas because I was privileged to go to a lot of schools. I met some of the most interesting thinkers in education. So I've formed some ideas about how education should look in the 21st century. And uh, if I'm a Brought on board, I'd like to share those down the road after I understand a little bit more about direction and, and mission and what this district's up to. All right. Thank you. Appreciate it. Carol. I, I just wanted to start off by saying thank you to all of you. I know how many hours you have put in in the last few months. And it's really appreciated by this community. Um, my name is Carol Freund, and I have been in the Valley for about 33 years. My husband and I own the Creative Edge, which is a computer store in Haley, and we just celebrated our 25th wedding anniversary. We have two children who graduated from Wood River High School in 2009 and 2010, and they are both graduating from college in two months, two weeks. Since the time they were young, I have been a classroom ball. I have been involved in the school district. I'm sorry, I'm just nervous. I'm just going to take a deep breath. Um, I have been involved in the school district and starting as a classroom volunteer and then I joined the PTSA as an officer. I was an officer at 
Haley Elementary, Wood River Middle School, and Wood River High School. I served as a treasurer for a couple of years, secretary for a couple of years. I served as a vice president and then a president at the high school. I, when I was part of the PTSA officers, we had monthly meetings with the superintendents where we would go through all the different issues that were coming up back from the bus barn all the way to starting the first AP class, the taxation issues. I served on academic council at the middle school and the high school for about seven years, the whole time my students were there. I served as a parent representative for the gate committee for about seven years. I served as a community and business representative at the district's core team for about five years. I was on the Wood River Middle School hiring committee for the principal and the vice principal. At the high school, I served on numerous committees and um, during that time, I did research into model schools and I reported back to the um, motivation committee and the scheduling committee and we decided that we would try and get a college counselor at the high school and um, the scheduling committee, we looked into numerous types of schedules and we adopted the schedule that is in place today at the high school. I also chaired the senior bash the year my daughter was a senior. That was a huge job. And lastly, I served on the strategic planning committee for the district. I am passionate about education. I believe that the biggest gift we can give our children is an excellent education and instill a lifelong love of learning in them. I would consider it an honor to be on the board of trustees at the Blaine County School District. Thank you. My name is Richard Roberts, Rick Roberts. I am a relative newcomer to the Valley. I moved here in December 2012 with my wife and two kids. Uh, Thor, who is eight years old, is currently in the Haley Elementary School. Uh, my younger son is 18 months old and so is a future Blaine County student. Uh, my background is as a lawyer. I have spent uh, about 10 years as a lawyer, uh, four of which I spent working for federal judges. Uh, I was in, in both California as well as in the District of Columbia. Um, I have strong ties to the Valley. I've actually been coming here uh, since I was about 10 years old and began bringing my wife and then our kids until uh, we made a quality of life decision to move here to the Valley. Um, I have a strong background in community service. Uh, I have, when I was in the university, I've served on the ethics board. I have taken time to set up a community reading program. I have mentored alumni and other students in both uh, law school, university, high school uh, throughout my career. Uh, as I said, I've got about 10 years experience working as a lawyer, three of which, four of which were spent working for federal judges. And I think that experience in particular would be helpful to the board. Uh, working for the federal judges, I've been able to develop uh, problem solving, critical thinking skills, the ability to do research and analysis on tremendous, tremendously complex questions uh, coming up, you know, being able to weigh the facts and the evidence and come up with neutral decisions that uh, do the best to uh, come to the best conclusion without being uh, partisan or uh, striking a particular op opinion. Um, in being a lawyer, I've also had to work independently as well as collaboratively. Much of my work has been independent, but uh, working with clients, other attorneys, uh, judges, members of the public uh, has required me to be develop skills both in entrepreneur personal communication uh, as well as being able to write and speak effectively uh, to small and large audiences. I think that uh, what got me interested in the board position, I, I've volunteered in the past uh, for school activities, but what got me interested in the board position here was, uh, first of all, my, my strong belief that education is, um, is crucial to developing the whole child, both the concept of uh, uh, the standard core curricula, but beyond that, 
bringing children up to speed in areas that will help them in their careers and uh, throughout their life in a variety of different areas, whether it's uh, sports, nutrition, uh, the whole child. Um, so what, uh, what attracted me to this particular position now was that I saw an opportunity to do some valuable community service at a time when I personally have the time, the energy, and the, uh, frankly, the incentive. I have two, two kids who are young and in the system. Uh, and so I, I very much want to make sure, ensure that their education as well as the education of all the kids is, is as excellent as it can be. And uh, when I saw that this position had remained uh, unfilled for a while, I thought that perhaps my skills would be of use to the board, use to the community, use to the children. Uh, so I thank you all for considering me and appreciate the opportunity to be here today. He is. Okay. I considered talking to you, but I thought that might be a conflict. So. Yeah, I, I did not make the connection until you said your name, and I'm like, he's not Yeah, how many Thors <laughs> are there exactly? Okay, thank you. Um, my name is Tom Bergen, as was okay. introduced. Uh, I was born in Blaine County, I graduated from Wood River High School in 1979, and then from there went on to both uh, university as well as law school. Um, which I graduated and am a member of the bar. Uh, I think the reason that I am interested in this position is that education is sort of the public priority number one. And I kind of stated that in my letter that whether that's at the state level in Idaho, certainly that's true in Blaine County and, this, and in this community that education is priority number one and you all are the trustees of that education in, in this community. And I think it's important to focus on the fact that this is a trustee position. And so with that is a great responsibility to not only the kind of financial well-being of the community education system, but also the overall administration of that from a macro level. And I think that that's the kind of important thing, specifically designated as trustees under Idaho code. And, and that's not true of any other position in the state, whether it's city council or, or um, county commissioner or other kinds of things, it's a trustee. And I think that's a unique kind of responsibility that you all have and that I think um, I can contribute to, not only because of the sense of responsibility, but also sort of a, a background and a sense of the community. Um, so while I do not have children in the school system, I have been a part of this community for a long time. Um, after graduating, came back to the community and have been here for 20 years and feel that that is an important asset that uh, is you know, necessary. on. Any, any position where there's such a uh, public responsibility. The uh, great mathematician, Sir sort of Alfred North Whitehead, said that uh, progress is preserving order amid change and preserving change amid order. And it's been you know, a challenging time, certainly, um, for the, the school district in the last number of years. You all have faced a number of very challenging decisions in, in that time period. And I think, you know, so. There will be change or continue to be change with a new superintendent, certainly, but it's also important to preserve that, that sense of order that has existed in this community for as long as I've been a part of it, that education has been a high priority and education has been very important. And I think that that is, I guess, my primary motivation is I feel that I have something to contribute in that respect and um, would appreciate the opportunity to do so. Thank you. Well, I mentioned it a little bit ago. Um, number one, I'd like to contribute. I'd like to be a part of this community in a more, in a little more depth. But I mentioned I had a kind of a unique perspective. I have been doing a tremendous amount of study on the education paradigm, and one of the things, if I can make a difference, and I don't understand fully at this point in time what the depth and what the role of the board would be. 
But the average student graduating today from high school, in fact, actually 10 years ago, will have between 12 and 14 jobs in their lifetime. And we have to provide the kind of education that lets these kids move seamlessly from one job to another as they go through life. We have to create lifetime learners and we have to make an environment that these kids are going to want to come to school and they're going to want to learn. And I think if I can contribute to that through being on the board, I think that's something that would be well worthwhile. I think any particular district, if they have the right set of skills in the right places and the right programs, can rise above every other district in the state. And that's one of the things that I'd like to contribute to if I could. And uh, with my background, I think that that's very possible. I would be more interested in focusing on integrating technology more into the classroom and getting the teachers involved from the standpoint of, you know, assisting more in using technology because we're in the middle of a technological revolution and we're still using textbooks way, way too much. So with that in mind, that's kind of what the focus would be from my standpoint would be if, you know, if once I understand the dynamics of the board and what's feasible to make some suggestions and create some ideas that might produce some change in this paradigm. Thank you. Carol, same um, What motivates me? I, I have always enjoyed volunteering. I volunteered for numerous causes over the years. I enjoy the collaboration. I enjoy problem solving. I have devoted a substantial amount of time in the schools and within the school district. My children are both grown now and I'm not in the schools the way I was, but I still have a big interest in education. I find myself reading a lot about national trends. I keep up with what's going on in the district. And I would love to be a part of volunteering in this way for something that I care so much about. Thank you. Rick, what motivates you? What well, motivates me to become a school board member? I, uh, I the, the first principle is just that I have a strong view that education is uh, infinitely valuable throughout a, a person's life. I, I don't really see an end point for education, but uh, certainly at the, the lower school, middle school, high school level, it is so important to get a good education. I know that in Idaho, something like 50% of the kids don't make it all the way through college, but uh, to the extent that you can prepare kids throughout uh, each step of their education, all the kids in the community, to uh, have the potential to succeed uh, in college and stay in college. That is um, something that, uh, that motivates me to want to help serve on the board and, and bring the skills that I possess, uh, which would hopefully be of use to the board as well. I think I also come from a strong background of community service. It, uh, the motto of my high school was non sibi sed cuntis, uh, Latin for uh, not for one but for all. And that was a value that was installed, instilled in me early. And it is one that throughout my life, when I've been able to offer my time on a, a voluntary basis, I have done so. I jump at that opportunity. Um, again, as I said earlier, uh, the fact that I have kids that are... Uh, in the school system, will be going into the system, uh, is a powerful motivator. And finally, watching uh, through the, the news over the last year and a half or so since I've been here, the challenges that the board has faced and continues to face and, uh, uh, are ones that uh, I view as being fascinating. I, I'm sure they may have been painful or <laughs> difficult or, you know, I, but for you all. But as I've, I've watched, I've, I've thought, you know, that you guys are doing important work. And, uh, and so I would love to be part of that. Thank you, Rick. Tom. Yeah, I think as others have said, the, the <laughs> primary motivation is just to contribute. Um, one of the advantages of growing up in this area is 
that my nephews have not enjoyed or other family members have not enjoyed when they've grown up in bigger cities is to be a part of a team. You know, we were able to all be a part of a little league team. We were all able to be a part of a debate team. Those kinds of things, you, you know, they were always looking for people to be a, a part of that a team. And even as I was thinking about this particular position being zone four and not living in zone four, um, one time when I was uh, nine years old and played for the little league team in Bellevue, they, the Haley team, one of the Haley teams, didn't have enough players. So they said, well, you're the nine-year-old. You're kind of the worst player on our team. <laughs> Why don't we all contribute you and one of your other uh, competitors to, or one of our other teammates to that position? And okay, fair enough. You know, we knew the kids from Haley, and so we were, but I think that was just one of the benefits of growing up here that others that I've experienced over time have not had, is to be able to contribute in many ways. And that's the point, really, I guess, here still is to be able to contribute to the uh, responsibilities that you all have to contribute to the conscientious effort that you all have made in the last few years and to be able to just sort of add the to the collegiality that at least in my experience uh, you've exhibited in trying to come to quick and and thoughtful and um, forward-thinking decisions and I think that puts uh, this district ahead of others in the state puts this district ahead just generally and, and needs to continue. And, and I feel that, um, you know, I, I can contribute something to that effort. Thank you, Tom. And uh, question number two, we'll start with Carol. Uh, describe what past experiences or qualities you possess that will contribute <coughs> to our board. Well, that was kind of my introduction. Um, I spent about 20 years working in the schools on all the various committees and in the different schools. Um, I've come to the school board meetings. I've spoken my voice. I also am a small business owner. I've prepared budgets. I do the accounting. I deal with lots of different types of people and uh, prepare business plans. So I think between my business experience and my experience of working in the school district and qualities, I would say I am a good listener. I am a team player. I am enthusiastic. I have a sense of humor. And I am an avid reader. I would be very prepared for the meetings. And I'm passionate about education. Thank you. Rick? I think the qualities that I, I would bring that uh, would contribute to the board, uh, one of which is that I would bring a, a fresh perspective uh, to I'm new to the community and come with no preconceived notions uh, or entrenched notions about the school system, uh, uh, the community, or the individuals in it. Um, beyond that, I, as I've said already, I have young kids who are in this or will be in the school system, uh, which strongly motivates me to uh, to devote my energy and attention to board activities. I possess uh, qualities and skills, much of which um, come from my background as a lawyer, uh, including um, the ability to work collaboratively as well as independently. I am, am a voracious learner. I'm able to uh, learn quickly, synthesize facts and information quickly, and um, and analyze and communicate uh, in whether written or oral form in, in uh, I'm, I'm skilled in those areas and I think that those would all contribute to the board. Um, and beyond that, I have a, um, I believe strongly in the value of education. I also have the time and the energy to devote to the board. Uh, and I'll leave it at that, thank you. I think some of these relate to what is the motivation to be a part or to apply for this uh, opportunity. And you know, as I'd mentioned, it's just kind of the, the responsibility that's associated with it, the uh, conscientiousness that's necessary to um, prepare them through the materials, get through the materials, be prepared for meetings. It, but, but also I think there is, it's necessary to, to be open-minded, uh, that, that, that you all may not have known 
two years ago what kinds of issues you would face in the past two years. People just, you know, it's, it's a dynamic situation, a dynamic environment, and we don't know what kinds of circumstances will come up in the, in the coming two years, or the coming year for that matter. And so I think it's not necessarily an issues-based thing, but just um, that is a critical here, but as mentioned, the ability to analyze data, analyze information, draw reasonable conclusions, draw sensible conclusions, draw conclusions that you think would be supportive and are consistent with the community's vision and values for an educational system. I think those are the things that really are, distinguish um, the school district and, and you all from other areas. And, and so I, I think those are the important kind of criteria and important qualities that are necessary to uh, serve on a board of this nature and is those critical thinking, you know, the things that are spelled out even that you want your own students to uh, and that we want our own students to have are, are those critical thinking skills because they aren't going to know what they're going to face. You know, the technological changes that were, were uh, spoken of a few minutes ago, it's a, as they say, a very dynamic world, but those are the kinds of skills that will get you into the, to the collegiate atmosphere, successful in that atmosphere, into the job market or other uh, uh, opportunities and to succeed, and I don't really see that those are different than the kind of skills that we're trying to um, incorporate into the educational system. Thank you. Uh, David? Well, I think I alluded a little bit to that when I started uh, talking, but one of the things I think I bring to the table is the fact that I, with my background, I spent hours and hours and hours with superintendents and business managers and, and bus managers and kitchen managers and people who understood the district from the top to the bottom. So I have kind of a unique perspective on how the district functions. And as I alluded to before, I also understand the dynamics that you deal with every day, the issues and the problems and the hurdles that you get through. Sometimes these hurdles are actually in detriment to the running the school district. Some of them are so catastrophic. So I think I understand the inner workings of the district about as well as anybody that hasn't actually set on a board. Now as far as, as sitting on the board is concerned, uh, if I'm selected, the first thing I'll do is to spend time understanding what the mission and what's trying to be accomplished and uh, basically keeping my big mouth shut. Okay, uh, our third question, begin with Rick. What do you see as the board's roles and responsibilities? And of these responsibilities, what do you think is the number one job? Well, the, technically the board's responsibilities are laid out in the statute. I think there are nine specific uh, roles that are laid out for the board. Essentially, it's the legislative arm uh, has responsibility for uh, administrative and personnel decisions, choosing a superintendent, um, uh, maintaining the physical plant. Uh, there are a group of particular roles and responsibilities that uh, the board is charged with dealing with. Overall, uh, it is a, a policy setting role, in, at least in uh, the way that I've, I've read the um, relevant rules. But beyond that, I mean, the, the bottom line, the number one job of the board, in my view, is uh, to provide the best possible education in a financially responsible manner for the children of this district. And coupled with that is a responsibility to provide uh, the best possible environment for learning for the kids, and that includes uh, making sure that the teachers, the administrations, and the staff are all uh, given the resources and the tools and the incentive that they need to, uh, to serve the children of the district. But at the end of the day, it's about making sure that the kids are educated and all the kids are educated uh, in line with the community standards. I, I do go back, I guess, to that idea of trustee, that the, uh, the, the role is as trustee, that, that in uh, service to the district, that the, the district will be in a better condition when you finished than it was when you started. 
uh, just as whether you're a trustee in any other kind of uh, in environment or circumstance, is that that um, situation is better when you concluded than it was when you started. And it's been healthy financially, and maybe grown financially, if that's appropriate, um, but at least healthy financially. And also that the kind of administration of the district has um, been handled responsibly and even-handedly and open-mindedly. And I think that um, those are the kind of primary, I mean, there are the statutory responsibilities, but, but it seems to me, again, that I focus back on that kind of idea of, of trustee. And the, there's a benef the beneficiary always exists in a trustee situation. And in this situation, the students are the beneficiaries. And so everything needs to be oriented, whether it's um, financially or otherwise, towards those students as beneficiaries of this program. And that the d district and the system is in a better condition when you leave than when you um, started. So I think that that is, kind of, is, is basically the primary responsibility and job one of um, members of the Board of Trustees. David? Well, I pretty much <coughs> agree with what's been said here as far as the basic responsibilities, but I think one of the things that I would like to see in a board if you look at the international standards, um, as, let me digress for just a second. I just went to the 100th anniversary of the company that I work for. And in that crowd, to my astonishment, were 19 Indians. These people were over here doing systems analyst work, programming, things of that nature. These are all jobs that should have gone to American kids. We are rapidly becoming a secondary nation when it comes to education. I think we're ranked like 24th or 25th, depending on which report you read, as far as math, math and science and reading. I would like to be on a board where the district tries to bring their level up to international standards, because that's where the competition is. The competition is not within the borders of Idaho. The competition is worldwide. These kids need to leave this school with the kind of skill sets that they can compete on any plane anywhere. And if I were on the board, that's one of the things that I would like to see is that people in the state of Idaho would look to Blaine County and say, what are these people doing? They're so far ahead of everybody else. Thank you. Carol. Okay. Um, I see the number one responsibility as keeping students as the focus whether it's approving budgets, hiring a superintendent, setting policy, I think to constantly keep students as the focus of the decisions is the number one responsibility of the board. I see the board as a forum for community involvement. I think the board should be highly accessible to the community and accountable to the community. I think I see the board as sort of a watchdog for this community um, that we get the biggest bang for our buck, that we get the best education we possibly can for the amount of tax dollars we're spending. Thank you. I started. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> I'll go again. Go again. <laughs> And I assume by that your present uh, occupation, uh, present position, I'm not sure exactly what was intended by that, but uh, I'll, I'll assume as much and say that uh, um, I, I think that it is. I, I work in the land use and building services office for Blaine County. Uh, I've been there in that office for um, 20 years. And while there might be times, you know, this kind of relates potentially to another question on the conflict of interest, there might be times I know that the school district does own some property out in the county, and that kind of thing would go through um, that office. Uh, now, most of the facilities have been within the city limits, and we haven't, in my experience, really ever had a situation where we've kind of had a conflict between people that work for that office or anyone that worked for the school district. But um, I, I guess if, if the, in thinking of it in terms of compatible as in conflicts, I, there could be some, but I don't really think that those would ever 
or the, o the only one situation I know of is the property that the school district owns west of, uh, of Haley. And, you know, facilities, so I, I, would, I would have to kind of, uh, I guess, separate myself from any role that I would serve it, at the county, I think, and that, you know, there are other people that can handle those particular applications and those particular processes. I'm not a decision maker, at least uh, it, like the Board of Commissioners or others that make decisions for the county, and for that reason, don't think that there would be a, a problem. Um, as far as the time and energy, I, I, I um, don't really see an energy issue or an energy problem. I, I, I'm healthy and have been healthy for a long time and hope, you know, God willing, I will remain healthy and, and active and energetic. Um, you know, the, the, the time is, frankly, the one thing that concerns me most with the application. You know, as I think about some of the, the, the issues that I would face um, being a part of the board, the time frame is the one that is of concern. Um, we, it, it's busy and, and gets busier at the county at times, depending on the season, depending on you know, the economy, frankly. Um, but I, I also um, do not really have other volunteer responsibilities and feel that um, you know, I can devote the kind of time that's necessary to be prepared and, and make good and prudent judgments for the, the district. So. Well, I spend most of my time gardening, cycling, and skiing, and I don't see any conflict there. Um, as far as the time's concerned, uh, being retired, I've got no conflicts. Yeah, I have no conflicts as well. I, I, my husband and I own our own business, and I'm quite flexible. And my children have moved away, so um, I have time and energy. I also have, uh, I have the time and energy to devote to being a trustee. I am a, uh, starting my own business in the past. I've always worked for large organizations and my time has not been my own. Uh, now my time is my own and I would like to devote it to uh, serving for, serving the board and the, the community as whole. And uh, as I've said before, I have tons of energy to devote to this. Um, so thank you. Uh, next question, we'll start with David. How would you handle requests if approached by individuals? Uh, probably would depend on the request. If it were something that was relevant to the board to be handling, I'd tell them to come to the meeting and present their question. If it was something of a conflict of interest nature, I would tell them that I couldn't help them. Um, this actually has happened to me quite a few times over the years as a PTSA officer. People would call me at home or I'd see them in the grocery store and I had everything from complaints about the senior project to the fees at the middle school and I would listen to them and then give them a contact person, somebody to get in touch with that they could get their issue resolved. So the school board I think would be pretty similar. It's put them in contact with the right person or suggest that they come to a board meeting and give public comment. I agree with what's been said before. In essence, if you have a request that involves a teacher or an administrator, you would undoubtedly want to send the individual asking uh, or making the request to go through the proper channels within the school system. Uh, if it were making a request that in some way related to uh, a purely school board function, then I think the recommendation I would make is to send a letter, an email to the board, contact the board uh, through whatever the proper uh, means are there uh, and raise it with the board as a whole. But of course, it depends on the nature of the request. Thank you. Yeah, the requests are handled by the board collectively, not by individual members of the board, or by administrators, uh, or the superintendent. I mean, I think there are staff that are assigned certain responsibilities and would handle certain requests. Uh, and, and so I think there's, a, there's a, kind of an order to that. And trustees don't make board decisions in, individually. I and mean, it's you know, kind of regardless of the uh, group that is in that position, they make decisions collectively. And so all those, I think, would, be, would need to be referred to the appropriate uh, body or administrator for further action, and that's not handled on an individual level. Thank you. Uh, question number six, we'll start with Carol. Uh, what is the purpose of public education, and how does 
that apply to our community? Hmm. Well, I think the purpose of education, whether it's public or private, is to give students the tools and the guidance they need to empower them to achieve their full potential. And I think that's kind of it in a nutshell. And how does it apply to our community? Again, once again, finding the best teachers and empowering these students to come out of our schools ready for the world. The purpose of a public education as opposed to a private education is to provide an education for all citizens, regardless of their uh, economic means, their ethnic group, their religious group, whatever category they may fall into, uh, to give them a level playing field to achieve uh, success in, in, uh, in school as well as in life. Uh, I, I completely agree with what Carol said about the purpose of education in general. I mean education in general is, is about providing knowledge and skills so that uh, children can go on to succeed uh, in education careers and, and, and life in general. How that applies to our community, I think, is uh, the mission statement uh, talks about a, a focus on the whole child and ensuring that, um, uh, that the district is a world-class community for uh, learning and teaching, uh, community of learning and teaching. And I think that that, uh, that pretty much sums up how it applies to our community. I think the kind of to be very concise, I guess, about that is, is as I think was stated in some of the materials, a student-focused excellence. It, again, student-focused, they're the beneficiaries of your work, they're the beneficiaries of the uh, superintendent's work, of the administrator's work, of the teacher's work, and need to be, you know, that's the purpose of public education is educating those students and making sure that once they are, have completed the system, that they can go out and contribute to the world, um, I, you know, as being sort of a product of that uh, public education system locally, I felt like, okay, I can go out and I can um, go to a, any number of universities and go to any number of locations and sort of manage those situations. And, you know, a little bit of anxiety, I guess, about that growing up in Bellevue, Idaho, but I felt that when I left the system that I was prepared, to go on to other endeavors and do other things, broaden, broader horizons. And I think that's a, the key thing for um, still in this district is to be able to provide that student-centered uh, education that can enable them to go forward into uh, our community, into the broader community, into even the global community, and compete and participate and be uh, contributors to the larger uh, citizenry, if you will. I think citizen is mentioned in in those materials as well, and it is an important component of the purpose of, of public education. And you know, I'm, I'm grateful to see that there are four of us that have, have applied for this, because I, I think that is, you know, frankly, was, was disappointing that there maybe wasn't a greater you know, citizen uh, willingness to uh, step in and assist you. Well, I think the primary mission is to provide a platform so that kids, when they leave public education, they are self-sufficient, capable of moving on to higher education or to a career if that's what they decide. But provide them with the necessary tools that they can go out and become a useful member of society without getting into trouble. And that's probably the main function. As far as the community is concerned, it's not just this community because a vast number of those children will leave this school district and move someplace else. So it's the community at large. To my knowledge, I have no conflicts of interest. Uh, as an attorney, my uh, primary focus is on uh, federal matters, and uh, and I have not built 
uh, business at this point that, that has any current conflicts, none that I can anticipate. Were there ever to be something that I viewed as being a potential conflict of interest, I would immediately bring it to the board's attention, recuse myself uh, uh, if necessary, um, or if the, the board agreed that I should, uh, and, uh, and ultimately would um, resign from the board if I had any, any significant conflict of interest. Yeah, I am not aware of any kind of conflicts that would regularly require me to recuse myself. Uh, I did mention in you know, kind of the earlier response that uh, in the position with the county, there might be times when there would be some um, you know, potential uh, conflicts with the school district application and, and that would be submitted into the county. As I say, I've seen very little of that in my uh, experience, however. As far as uh, family or, I mean, or business connections, I, mean, I, I uh, am... Do, do my, my parents did invest sort of rather heavily in the area um, when you know you could buy lots in Bellevue for next to nothing. They made wise decisions and did that, and so there is some uh, business that has been passed down to um, my siblings and, and myself. And but I, I you know, know of no conflict that would really arise in that that situation either, and um, that there's any financial gain to be sort of realized by any of those situations. Uh, in fact, I think that that was one of the reasons why this particular opportunity was more appealing as a voluntary opportunity than some of the others is because there was the lack of that, that I didn't really see in this position some of the conflicts that might arise in some of the other opportunities that exist out there where, you know, in any number of ways there might be a conflict or a problem and, and those didn't appear to exist in this situation as far as I was aware. Thank you. David? I have none. Ditto. None for me. Last question, we'll start with Tom. Do you have any specific changes you want to make in school district policies, programs, or the various schools curricula being offered? And if so, what changes would you want to make and why? This was the tough question. <laughs> so I, was, um, I guess I, I thought of this really more in terms, kind of even back to my initial comment, that progress is change in, in order and order and change. And that um, you know, it, it's been a challenging time for the school district in the last few years, I think. Uh, you, you've managed it well from w what I've observed, and I commend you for that. Um, and I, I think probably maybe no change. And, and I don't really want to say no change because obviously there's a new superintendent that's going to bring exciting and dynamic things to the community, and there's going to be the opportunity for you to evaluate that new perspective. And that's, going, you know, that's actually going to be kind of a fascinating uh, opportunity for you all. Um, but the, the, the key, I think, is maybe stability in, in to the system and bringing kind of, again, that sense of responsibility, that sense of being a trustee that you would leave it in a better condition than you found it. And that, that uh, it's not about, you know, I'm not here with a particular agenda about a particular uh, policy that, that I like the governor's, you know, recommendations for, for uh, school uh, change or Common Core or any of these other programs that might have particular components that the school district wants to evaluate. And I, that, that's not why I uh, sought this position, because I have an agenda in that respect. It was more actually maybe the absence of a particular agenda that I think is valuable to contribute to the district at this point. With a, a new superintendent coming in, there's going to be all that opportunity to evaluate what's occurring. It's a dynamic district generally with a, you know active school uh, a teachers association. And I think that all of those, you know, I will bring ideas and will bring uh, uh, the kind of change that's going to be evaluated by this board. And the key actually isn't so much the focus on change, but the focus on uh, stability and kind of the preservation of that order amid that change. And, and I think that that's really maybe the, uh, the, the, the one thing that I focused on in assessing this question. Well, because of my background, I do have some ideas for some changes, but being a member of an organization, all I would have to do is, is understand the dynamics of the board to begin with, and then down the road, if the board was interested in my ideas, I would make those presentations and see what they thought, see what the obstacles were to implementation, if there were trials that they wanted to look at, things of that nature. But 
right at this point in time, it's a little premature to be thinking about any kind of changes. I need to understand the dynamics of what's going on in the board. I need to further understand where common core standards are fitting into this district, what the take is on that, what the reception's been, where they want to go with that, and uh, then move ahead. Now, I have no personal changes that I would like to make. I look forward to, I guess changes is the word, but just with our new superintendent coming in and what the future holds for the district. But personally, no, there's nothing that I would choose to change. I think I will echo Tom in that. I, I recognize that there have been many changes and new initiatives that have been uh, uh, either chosen by the school district or uh, thrust upon the school district over the last year and, or so. And so to the extent that um, as a board member, I would be able to help support and move forward the, um, the changes that are already taking place, whether that is uh, uh, assisting the new uh, superintendent uh, bring her changes forward, uh, ensuring that the dual immersion program gets the support that it needs, um, supporting programs such as the Science Night, the International Baccalaureate Program, um, uh, all the various, uh, making sure that the uh, strategic plan is, is implemented and pushed forward to the extent that I would be able to um, act a, as a, in a collaborative way with the board and with the administration of the school to make those happen, those would be um, the sorts of goals and the sorts of activities I would like to get involved in. As I think everyone else has said, I don't have a particular specific change that I would like to see made. Um, I would hope that in the role of trustees, uh, uh, I would be able to help in whatever way I can to ensure that the kids are testing um, uh, at the highest possible levels, the administration is supported, and, uh, and uh, that we would be ready for changes when they came. Thank you, everyone. We're at number nine, which is back to the board. So, Chairman Daniel. Board, I'll go ahead and open that up. Do you have any particular questions for any of the candidates? It's not really a, a question out all the way to green. We can it's hear. not really a, a question. It's, it kind of goes back to the number four question of the time and the energy. And just in the last couple of years, we've had many meetings. <laughs> I think last year it was something like 55 or 60. This year alone, yeah. Meetings. It's, it's, it's been a crazy <laughs> year. Um, clearly the last couple of years there's been a lot more happening I think than hopefully will be a change in these upcoming years. But I just wanted to make all of you aware of that. Sometimes, you know, we have our, our, um, our monthly meetings uh, in, on Tuesday nights and we have board workshops that are at noon. Uh, once a month that go from 12 until 1.30. Uh, and then we have hearings and board retreats and whatnot. So I just wanted to put that out there to everyone if anybody had any comments about that. On average, how many meetings do you have? <laughs> uh, let me go ahead and respond to that, I guess. My first year on the board, I believe we had 32 could be wrong, but it's low 30s. Second year, once again, a few more than that, probably mid 30s. This last year, with everything going on, we've had drastically more. Drastically <laughs> more. <clears throat> wow. One of my goals is to <laughs> narrow it back down um, to a more manageable, much more manageable number. And how much time do you all? Obviously, this past year was unusual, uh, but how much time do you invest on, say, a monthly or a weekly basis in board activities, whether it's individually or as a group? 
I'll share my experience, which has been one year, and it's been unique because of all the different challenges we've faced. But literally 30 hours a week, yeah. I would say, between committee work, between reviewing information, between, you know, we changed the budgeting process and working with our business manager. We've had so many different things to for communications, working with our communications director. Um, you know, the behind the scenes work as far as researching and getting information has been tremendous. I don't anticipate it will continue at that level. I think it will be dramatically different. More along the lines of 10 hours a week, I think would be a very reasonable expectation. And some of the responsibilities of being chair and vice chair are a little more time commitment to that as well. So um, my first couple of years would, would probably be 10 an average of 10 hours a week, and it's been drastically more this year. Um, so I, I'm going to um, echo exactly what they said. I think it's uh, probably is about 20 hours for me, but I'm not a vice chair or chair. Um, having said that, I have I've had an experience in the last few years with a leadership change being on a board that there was a leadership change, and it the the Things changed so quickly I couldn't believe it when the new leader came in and all of a sudden we were looking at each other and we didn't, it was really strange. We didn't almost have enough to do. And, <laughs> and it, it felt good after a while, but in the beginning it was like something must be wrong. And it's not. It's that the things that you're doing, um, and I'm not saying, you know, here's John sitting in the background. It has not nothing to do with John. It has to do with the, the place being in flux and a new philosophy, which is, we came out and we were a little bit, you know, derided for that, but that's really what, what it was. And um, so I think that there's, uh, it's really, I'm, I'm sharing Sean's goal, and I think that we're all on the same page with that. Yeah, and I think a lot of the hours, too, besides, we were all highly involved in the search process because that was our job. That's one of our number one jobs. So we were all highly involved from hiring the search firm committee all the way to the end to the public forums and whatnot. So that took a lot of, a tremendous amount of time. So we do not force that. <laughs> yeah, I, I noticed you kind of promoted uh, subcommittees or, or community committees that would, I, I know I attended a meeting and I'm not sure if they've met since then on, on uh, security in schools that was held last fall. I assume that that kind of relieves you somewhat of, of some of the day-to-day, -day, at least, responsibilities or the responsibilities on kind of a micro level? Um, well, and often most of those committees usually has a board member on them as well. Like the policy committee has a board member. Uh, the wellness committee, I think, is going to pop potentially. Um, so, yes, collectively we're not all involved with all of them, but there is some expectation of committee involvement usually from the board, um, but usually just one, not five or something. <laughs> I think that's exactly the, the reason that we're talking about committees is to open it up more to the community mm -hmm. and to spread the workload and also um, just to tap into the amazing expertise that's in our community. We're all, that's a goal of this board. Um, so, yeah. All right, does the board have any further questions? Any further questions from the candidates to the board? I have one, which is what would you, uh, when you started with the board, what skills did you discover that you needed that you didn't know you would need when you came on to the board? I think one of the things that's been extremely <coughs> helpful for me is an understanding of the workings of our district so that when presentations are made or issues come forth, you have a, a big perspective of how it fits into the bigger picture of how that piece fits in. And so <coughs> I think that's been ex tremendously helpful for me. Um, I didn't realize how much it would be used, <laughs> but it has. Um, yeah, because there's so many diverse things that we have to uh, 
grapple with, make decisions on, problem solve. Um, so yeah, I think that's really important. I think one of the big things for me as well was in the learning curve was taking the difference between private sector and public funding and having the responsibility to the taxpayers but yet doing the correct thing for, for our students and our kids and doing the, the best that we can for them in all aspects. That's muted. Um, one of the things that I think when I look back on the last few months, it's been about a year or a little bit less, is I've been really proud to be a part of this board. And these, we, we say quite a bit, we're very different people, but there's a bedrock respect for each other. And I guess that I, um, I never really um, thought about that kind of abstract quality that being a board member was going to, that it was going to be these people, you really, it's a kind of a marriage here. And so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I would echo that. I think um, there's many times where I may come into a meeting thinking one way and then I hear something that Sean or Kathy or Liz, oh yeah, that, that makes sense too. So there's many times that my position may have changed and I've seen that with our whole board where we do all respect each other and we listen to each other and we look at the different points of view and and we like to ask you know the people that we work with their points of view as well and I think that's really important because we're all working together and I think that makes it our, our strongest district. Any questions? All right. Uh, with that, board, if there's no further questions, take a minute. Uh, go ahead and uh, take a few. Can I just make a comment first? Feel free. Um, I just want to thank all of you for coming. I mean, it's, you know, all of you answered the questions, you know, really put thought into it, clearly have um, put yourself out there for this commitment, and Clearly, this is going to be a difficult decision. Um, you know, one of the things that Liz touched on earlier is the diversity of our thinking and the attributes we bring forward. And so, you know, that's something that's going to be really important to me as I make a decision. Um, that doesn't mean that I don't think you would be a fantastic board member if I don't choose you. Um, it's more of what what completes the group in the most brings the most diversity to complete that segment so that we all collaboratively come together because that's such a strength of our board. So anyway, I just want to say thank you before we get down to this for um, your willingness to serve. Yeah, I, I, I mean, I would like to echo that. After our first round of not getting any candidates, <laughs> <laughs> this is amazing. I mean, I am so Still. excited to have the four of you here and to come and interview and apply for this position because any one of you would make a great candidate. So it's very, very exciting to you guys. <laughs> <laughs> and just the last thing that I wanted to say is for I, for anybody who's not chosen, so whichever three is not chosen, you would be such an addition to the work that we're doing and I really hope you consider um, participating because we sure could use your expertise and that's what this is all about is collaboration. We'll go ahead and just take a short recess while the board kind of puts their thoughts down. So feel free to grab a drink or, or whatnot, and uh, we'll call everybody back in here in just Laurie, a few minutes. Do you want us to leave these? On? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs>
I was saying, Kathy, you think great for Thor, by the way. I hope you've already voted before I started oh, no, I already voted. <laughs> <laughs> no, uh, but you think great. I mean, the thing that's for Thor is like a piece of that pushes in and the game of the team. And yet that's been great. Oh, good. Oh, good. Yeah. Are you in Jordan? Yeah, I've coached him. I've coached him um, for years in different sports. Um, I haven't coached baseball the last two, but I coached him. Yeah, <laughs> 
Gilbert as well. I mean, he'll remember that first time ever. Right, right. He hit a home run. <laughs> Is that right? Yeah. 
Yeah, you still got it, baby. Yeah. It's more defining. Kind of I'm in a coffee shop. <coughs> Very defining. Uh, and this guy says to me, uh, he says, can I ask you a question? We're starting to talk him for a second. I didn't pay much attention to him. Yeah, well, because he's been directed to have HTC. And he said, uh, can I ask you a question? Yeah. Lots of different things. Would you by any chance go to school in Michigan? And I said, yeah. He says, did you go to Michigan? Yeah, it's like a whole other thing, too. This is yeah. 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 Wow, that's cool. So I won't see Thor tomorrow. I will see him next week. Wow. We have a game Monday and Wednesday. So, so, he, so he goes, uh, he leaves there and he goes to the University of Michigan. I went to Western Michigan. And uh, he got a dental degree. Yeah. Yeah. And he did it in Michigan. Yeah. 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 Oh, oh, you so you old 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 oh wow. Yeah, we moved here about <laughs> <laughs> and the first one is continuous. And I practiced there for you know, the first huge of the SRT, but that's a big thing out of time. So it was just really symbolic. Yeah. <laughs> See, mine were 18 months <laughs> apart. This is where you go get it all over. Yeah, it's like we're up in the point. It's like Alex. Oh, my gosh. My, my brother was just south of Grand Rapids. Oh, exactly. And it never had any time. And it's been a lot of fun, but it's she wouldn't know it. She wouldn't have any idea around it. That's just, I knew she was so I wasn't in the lecture. Yeah, this gym was the same way that I would like to. So I always tell you, it's running, you know, it's nice to be able to go. And we never ran around it. It was kind of the surreal time. Yeah. At that time, I was in five days together. Yeah. Oh, there's so, so, so much. We didn't really yeah. associate yeah. yeah. between yeah. us. So now we're really good friends. Wow. And you also now. Mine are yeah, both graduating in two weeks. And they're 18 months apart in age. My daughter was a five-year-old. I'm studying architecture. So they're both graduating on the same day at the same time at different schools. And I was like, you could not plan that if you tried. And they're not that far apart, but three and a half hours is still enough that... Well, we actually went down this weekend for her senior thesis show for architecture. This was her suggestion. She said, I'd rather you do this than come to graduation. So we did that, and then we'll go back in two weeks and watch my son graduate. So, she's at Cal Poly for the year. This fellow friend is at Stanford. So they're about three and a half hours, but As you go up the canyon, until I learn how to operate, uh, I don't think I'm <laughs> there. It's going to be weird. <laughs> No, I know. Yeah. No. But it's just really, what are the odds of that? And it's the June 15th graduation, which is kind of an odd graduation anyway, because they're both that day. Well, thank you, yes. It's good. It's all good. Do they know what they're doing? My son is um, going on to get his master's in fall. And Ali, after five years of architecture school, will she's planning on being an architect. She has an internship. Um, it's, a, it's, it's insane. It's, it is. No, it's truly. They have to get like a certain number of accredited hours. It's almost like four years of interning. Yeah, there's no question about that. After five years of architect school. It's more and then they have to sit for six or nine exams. Yeah, it's not, it's just to be an you know, it's not like you're, it's, but you know, the students who study it are so passionate about it that, and you know, they say, follow your passion. I just, 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 Oh, it's exciting. It's it sounds like, in fact, uh, this couple that I was just telling you, about, when they first moved here, yes, it Jim is. was still they're, back in Seattle. They're both happy. So it's hard. It's hard that they're that far away. But. Uh, she's, 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 
she's mm-hmm. never lived any place like that. She was. That's good. So she does a lot of a lot shows up where it comes from. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
you'd like to bring your family. All right. Congratulations. And I'm sure Lori will be getting in contact with you soon with administrative type things and just she's an invaluable resource for um, the operations and you know feel free to contact me and I'm sure the rest of the board as far as just general questions about our duties responsibilities that sort of thing okay thanks excellent with that do I hear a motion to adjourn I'll make that motion. discussion all in favor? Aye. 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 Meeting adjourned.